discrete Well, it's official. Here's our new 5 8 hose, of which new clamps. Everything's in there. All the hoses are hooked up. My old, uh, I don't know if you remember these. Look at that radiator cap. Push button release. These are actually pretty old. It's a uh, 14 pound for right now. But it's time. Now my um, filler neck's just a little bit offset from the hole because we're putting a 41 Buick radiator inside of a 35 Chevy grill of which one just one of these just sold on eBay for like $400. I almost freak um, Here you go Here she go, here she blow Boy, hit gurgling I don't see anything That Buick radiator must hold a good, at least, at least seven gallons in itself. I'd love to turn on the hose, but it doesn't make it out here. It makes it like to the edge, uh, about the middle of my driveway. Well, this is our first gallon. Anything? Anybody? Yeah. Oh, she's holding good. Alright, gotta get like six more. And on with number two. Why would I put water first? Well, say I didn't tighten that bolt and it's peeing out on the floor or something, or I forgot silicone somewhere, the water isn't going to kill anybody. Antifreeze, of course it'd be like before the winter, but uh, we'll get the right mix. I'd like to see how many gallons it is too, so that way I get a good idea, but I'm off to get number three from the hose. Okay, we're back. Number three. Can get it in there. A lot of gurgling. Holy crap, how many things take? <laughs> Oh, for number four. This is getting really old. <laughs> Alright, number four. This is warm water because the stuff I was when it was ice cold. Just because I can. Uh-oh, where's that coming from? Oh, the overflow. Cool. And I got smart. I got another milk container. I just dropped that one. Here's number five. Oh, I think she's full. Oh, four gallons? Huh. Oh, yeah, she's full. I can see the... You can't see it, but I can see the water level. 
Um, there is no thermostat in it. And here's a good thing. Look at it. It's leaking. Just a little bit. Those neck thermostat. I bought one of those. Oh, universal fit. Yeah. Oh, you never need to replace it. It's silicone. Yeah. It's coming off. That's just water from me overflowing it. Came up pretty fast. But nothing leaking out the bottom. Just excess. Alright, well, we've got a leaky thermostat neck uh, gasket. Of which I think I have the correct one right here. I think that's the correct one. Sure looks like it. And this one feels better. This one's rubber. That one's like two layers of aluminum and uh, like a rubber O-ring. I thought it was cute. Yeah, it's real cute. It don't work. Don't waste your time with them crap. Everybody thinks they make something bigger and better. That's not leaking. Okay, probably going to change that or see if I can tighten it. Which I doubt it's loose. It's probably uh, too thick for the damn thing. Well, after about four gallons of water... Crap. Um... The gasket leaking on the back of the thermostat housing no matter what you do so i'm going to put this nice rubber one in um the heater core had a little leak right, right there the drip it stopped i tightened it up i thought it was tight enough i don't want to honk down on those things and then break something you know so they're relatively tight but i loosened the lower clamp and i'm letting the water drain out right now down to the say the top of the intake manifold so i got a leak there and i had a leak there i don't see any others yet but it's just water Give her a little bath, wash off the dirt and the grindings and all that stuff. It's leaking out the front. I don't want it to go up back and I don't think it can make it above up to the valve covers because it'd have to leak over first on the intake manifold. Oh, the other one, that old original valve from the uh, Chevy engine that I really wanted to keep is leaking. I wonder if I can put some kind of like uh, bars leak or a Luma seal in there. Even if I left it open, I don't care. It was just the fact of that it came from the original engine, you know. Poor thing. Oh well, but there's the water dribbling out. I'm gonna pull the hose off in a minute. Some will come out faster. We're gonna put this rubber gasket in. Yeah. All right, still at it. Okay, this is the rubber one. Um, I don't remember what that's called. I know it's high temp. I did notice that, you know, I had this intake uh, sandblasted. I had sandblasted it. It's a little porous around the back corner here. Um, it's not the, the gasket's fault, per se, this crazy thing. Uh, I should have put some silicone on it, but we're going to put some silicone on this one. I got blue or I got black RTV. I don't know where the black is, so here's the blue. <coughs> but uh, I'm going to put a little bead of it around there. I'm going to run it without a thermostat for right now. Um, I will pick one up. Just haven't yet. One of those things. Of all things I don't have, it's a thermostat. Imagine that. But uh, I'd rather she ran a little too cool for right now, just to see. Timing and all that stuff's got to be set, and you never know. If it's too advanced, it could burn up an engine. Or... But I'm going to blow that dry and put some silicone around it, put the new gasket on, and put the cap back on. Now, if I could have, I would have gotten one of these in steel, and I would have gotten an original, but... Finding an upright one that points back. Even Dawn didn't have one. And it looks like there's supposed to be a rubber seal that goes here, too. What's up with that? I don't remember an O-ring. Don't remember an O-ring. Of course, something else to play with. I have O-rings. I can probably get one to fit. All right. Okay. The uh, new gasket is in. I didn't have that size O-ring, so I ran and I bought one. Um, I got silicone on it, top and bottom. I've been letting it cure. I put a little grease inside the hose before I put it on. That one's okay. No, it actually didn't leak. This one did. Um, the other day I was like, hey, I got a bracket. I had the, um, uh, the Stuart Warner fuel gauge with me. And I'm like, I don't ever remember seeing a hot rod where the fuel gauge was in the center anywhere. It always seems to be over near the key. So, I made one. That sticks up four and a half inches and it's got 
two bolt holes. And there's actually right there, there's a little tab on both sides. Let's see if I can get you in there. That uh, this little tab folded back, I made a slit so it could bend. And I painted the camera green. I haven't drilled the second hole yet, but I'll, next time the dash is way down, I will. Um, I have my diodes. I should put them in, huh? I have one. They didn't have six like I needed or whatever it was, four. But I'm waiting for this to cure. It's not even tight yet. I blew all the water out. I yanked the hose off quick and let it drain on the floor. As you can tell, here's my solder iron. Um, somebody mentioned, hey, it'd be cool to put, you know, the uh, original floor starter switch on uh, the floor when I get it together. And this is it. Now, normally in the stove bolt six, which was the original engine in this car, which mine was really junk. The whole head was full of rust, and it was really crap. Would have been a lot of money to rebuild it. This actually bolted to the back of the block, pretty much where the transmission holes are. And uh, this little rod would reach down, and not because I have a solenoid, but in the old ones it used to push this little switch, and that switch was on the top of the starter. You were manually jamming. A, uh, a solenoid. Actually, you're not even, not even. I wouldn't even call it a solenoid. You were jamming a switch to the battery lead, and that must have been pretty creepy. But yeah, I'd like to cut these brackets off or reshape them or something. It's a cast aluminum uh, button, and it wrenches off, and it does this little pivot thing. But yeah, that stuck through the dash, and that was your starter switch. You could wire it to uh, a switch or something, but I don't even have a floor to connect it to just yet. Actually, it could go relatively close to that. That could be up here. Or mount it off the other side or something. It's pretty big. I bet it'll reach around the one inch. Yeah, this might work. I have to make a bracket somewhere to hold it, but not right now. I've got it. I won't get rid of it. It's pretty cool. One of the things I was like, where the hell? How do you start this thing? And I studied it. It was this stupid little button on the floor. Everything here has been uh, taped. That wasn't taped. That's why it leaked. My little valve appears to have stopped leaking. I've got it all the way up. I think I'm going to put a wrench on it and open it as high as I can. I think it just seats with the brass on brass. There's nothing else in there. So, But, um... Uh, I don't think they had thermostats and all that stuff way back when. Like a non-pressure system. I got these too. These are box plugs. I was wondering if it would fit in there. It's close. It'll sit in there, but it might have to break a couple off to get it to work. And I got a little one. Too small. Too big, rather. Um, there's a couple extra holes. That's a bracket for what would be an air conditioner, probably, or uh, alternator off the other side of the engine like they used to be. This is, was the original, uh, I think it's the throttle mount. I've got some bolts in there right now. I'm going to take them out, put something shorter in just to fill the hole. I'll put a nice bolt in there. Uh, the alternator. You cannot wire, um, what the hell was I thinking? I just read it the other day. All right, all these leads are correct now. Everything's going right. That's number one. Goes over to the uh, coil. What was it the coil? No, number one. These two go to the battery, or AKA the starter. Um, one just does a loop and goes to here. This one goes up orange wire in, and it's got the diode, and that turns to the blue and white, which I figured what the hell we'll use them both. And that's on the coil. I don't know if that'll work. I've seen it uh, online, it was in a drawing, but uh, you never know. Um, tickle in the coil wire would just make it fire randomly. That's what it was, the electric choke. Last night I was studying the electric choke online, and it says you cannot connect this to the coil. It'll uh, take the power away from the coil, so we got to connect it to a switched power source, which would be, well, the fan, but uh, the fan is hardwired. 
and it controls when it's off and on. It'd be cool to um, put it on the opposite side of the fan, but the thing would never go off. So we can't do that. So it might have to go up the uh, throttle cable and then the, up to the fuse block and to a switch power source. Um, the breaker. You know, for right now, it's just floating here. I'm going to make a little angle iron bracket and probably just a quarter 20 bolt off the edge to hold it. But I didn't have the measurements for it. Um, my hose is hissing back here. I did get a new heater hose this morning. And it's made in America. <laughs> I left my Goodyear one on top. I like the old stuff. I actually went to uh, Pep Boys. <laughs> and I was looking at the hose clamps and they were made in Mexico. So I left. Call me crazy, but for every one thing you don't buy that's made in another country, maybe they'll wake up and uh, start making them in this country. I'm so American, huh? Edelbrock. American made, by the way. <laughs> what? Oh, you know, it's funny. What is on here that isn't American made? Probably that fan. <laughs> Well, it's made by Buick, but who knows. Um, the column's nice. It's so tight down bottom, and it pivots a little so I can pull the dash down. No problem. Just to gain access. Here is that wire. Now i got to put the diode on this. i got to look up which way it goes. I don't remember. Can't remember everything. And my valve cover is going to have to come off. We're going to have to set the rockers while it's running. That's my favorite part. Click, 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 and then down and up. There you go. I think half a turn or a full turn. I forget. It's been so long, but I'm dying to do it on this engine. Setting the valves is a fun part for me, like doing the electrical. But yeah, I thought the fuel gauge was pretty cool. And it gives me an extra hole. Doesn't bother me there. Gives me an extra hole in the gauges, so I have four gauges, so you could have, uh, you know, Amps, volts, temp, and oil pressure, of which my oil pressure is right there for now. And I don't know if I'm going to use that one, but that's an old Stuart Warner. Actually, pretty collectible gauge, too. It's not a, what they call a half moon, but it is pretty old. Can we put some water in this damn thing yet, or what? I'm getting excited here. All right, I'm going to tighten up them bolts. It's been a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes, so... I'm going to tighten up them bolts now and put some water in it and cross my fingers. Well, she's full. And the cap's on. And there's no leaks. I went over all the hoses. Everything's good. This one never leaked, I can say. Thank God. Probably because it's got grease on it. This one is still dripping just slightly. I think she'll close up, though. Not a big deal. No more drips on the heater core. The valve didn't leak anything. I did blow off uh, the intake. It was a little bit of water in it here and there. Nothing crazy. But uh, we got a little there. But she is full of water. Now you notice I didn't connect the 5 16th line to the uh, overflow because I don't want to fill the bullet with water. If it overflows and leaks on the ground, that's one thing for now, but until it's got any freezing, it's not going to be connected to the bullet. I keep calling it a bullet. It's a, uh, what the hell do they call it? A shell around. It's huge. That, I don't know if you can visualize it. That thing is about uh, 13 inches tall, maybe 14. Um, piece of junk. It's aluminum. Aluminum with uh, some kind of silicone rubber between it. Not impressed. We'll give it to Don. Maybe it'll work on his. Ay, ay, ay. Creepy. She's got water. She's got oil. Um, I checked on the exhaust. Um, the problem is the guy gave it to um, hurt his shoulder or something. Probably like the day after I gave it to him. I'm going to have to give him a call and stop at his house and get him there and see him at work. But they were talking he was going to be out for a week or two. Oh boy.
I'm not going to wait a week or two to turn this thing over. I'm giving it a week. But, um, another step. Dad's not here. I don't know where he is. I should try and call him. Coin frenzy. Close. Let's call Dad. not answering. I should put some coke in the radiator. Do you know how much coke has been consumed building this car? Enough to fill the radiator 20 times. <laughs> coke and vanilla coke is what all I drink. And coffee. Gotta have coffee. There's probably coffee cups everywhere. And yes, I have a Dunkin' Donuts five minutes away. Oh, a lot of running around this morning. Got the hose, come back, put it on, <laughs> tried some water in it, leaking, went out, got an O-ring, got some more, some better silicone, come back, put it together, not leaking. You're going to make a hundred trips to the store when you're building a car, and I mean a hundred. All of that and more. But I'm going to get back into the electrics a little. I'm going to mess with, uh, I need two more diodes like this one. Um, one's for the left directional, the right directional, and I'm thinking the high beam. Um, I've got three lights on my signal stat. It's a green, a green, and I think it's a red. And yeah, there's a red in the middle. What I want to do is right directional, left directional, and who knows, maybe a high beam. Here's my Fufu. What's up, buddy? This is my buddy. What you doing, buddy? You playing? Huh? His nickname is Snoot. Huh, Snoot? Ugh. Where are you going? Don't go into there. Fluffy, where are you going? You good boy? Don't go too far. Go bite Dawn. You're afraid of Dawn, huh? <laughs> He's my buddy, huh? He's my buddy. Went in the pet store and he was this tiny little thing, huh? He's a big boy. Of all things, I had to have a poodle. This crap on my floor. He's a great dog. But the mess. Oh boy. At least it's over here now and it's relatively contained. Yeah, right. But yeah, I'm liking that new uh, bracket. Um, this gauge, I don't know why. Something I noticed with Stuart Warner. All the gauges are identical, the bezel and everything, except for the fuel gauge. The fuel gauge is just a, a monster of itself, you know? A monster of its own. Bezel is bigger, and uh, this is a different light, different connections, different mount. I mean, come on, usually you make one, you make them all match, right? I guess not. My other gauge is in the car. Um, if anybody has any Stuart Warner gauges, let me know. I don't care if they're all yellowed and faded and stuff. That's what it's about. Um, I have an amp gauge. Um, I'd like to get volts. Amps, volts, temp, and uh, oil pressure. What else could I mean? What else does the engine need? All right, I'm rambling on, and uh, I'm probably gonna go to work because I know it was past noon time when I got home with the wife. I'm gonna measure this and make a washer for it. Uh, I'm going to get my Viking. That's not too shabby. Alright, take it some pictures, and then I'm going to work. Have a good day.